Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? Hopefully a quick video for you this time. As younger people have been getting into retro computing, I feel like they're missing out on a lot of the shortcuts or tricks that were developed by enthusiasts back when that technology was new. So this time I wanna share with you a bit of a shortcut to streamline installations of retro Windows editions and also make them just a little bit less annoying when it comes to installing drivers and software later on. If you consider yourself a retro computing expert, you can probably skip this video. This trick has been around for a long time, but if you're new to it, and especially if you've just picked up a retro piece of hardware and you need to reinstall Windows on it, this one should be right up your alley. I'm gonna start with a retro laptop. This is a ThinkPad 390E. I've shown this in other videos as well, and I'm gonna reinstall Windows 98 on it. This trick, I believe, also works on Windows 95 and Millennium Edition as well, but I think for most people with retro hardware, especially into retro gaming, 98 is gonna be their focus, so that's why I'm using it for this example. You will, of course, need a boot floppy disk and a Windows 98 reinstall CD. It's up to you to obtain those. I've started here with the boot floppy and I'm at this startup menu. I'm going to pick option one for start computer with CD-ROM support. Obviously we need to copy the files off of the CD-ROM in order to reinstall Windows. So that will load the drivers that are necessary. All right, now I'm at a command prompt. So it looks like it's assigned the E drive to the CD-ROM. Okay. And in this case, I know that my hard drive is the correct format, but there's stuff already on it. So I'm just gonna blank it out. And I will do the format C slash Q command. The slash Q means quick. That'll just make it take a lot less time. Otherwise we might be sitting here for a little while. Of course, if you have a different version of Windows already on the machine that uses a different file system like NTFS, or if the hard drive is completely blank when you get your retro computer, you're gonna need to go through FDisk to partition it first. That's kind of outside the scope of this video, but that's really easy to do and there's tons of tutorials online for that. Don't need to give the volume a label. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the C drive and it's obviously completely empty. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a few folders and they need to be nested. The first one is called Windows. Then I'm gonna to switch to it. And then inside Windows, I'm gonna create a folder called Options. The mkdir command is short for make directory, cd change directory. And then the final one inside there is going to be called cabs. And then, Oop, and then we switch over to that. Next, we simply need to copy some files from the CD-ROM into that folder. So we'll just do copy E colon backslash. And then in this case, it's win 98 backslash star dot star. The star dot star means basically anything in that directory. The stars are acting as like wild cards. And because we're already in the correct C drive, it'll just copy the folder in the C drive rather, it'll just copy everything into there so I can hit enter. And this is gonna take a couple of minutes, but in the grand scheme of things, this is going to be more efficient. What we're doing is we're basically copying everything from the Windows 98 install files off the CD to a special folder on the hard drive itself. What that allows us to do is install Windows 98 in this case, much, much faster. And that has to do with really the speed of the CD-ROM drive and also the way that Windows installs. Older versions of Windows, the classic series, plus even uh, versions like Windows 2000 and XP, they install only the files that they think are necessary for that particular computer. So there's gonna be additional files like uh, drivers and uh, additional software packages, that sort of stuff that may not be necessary when you first install Windows. And so it it's gonna kind of bounce around the CD-ROM drive, finding all the files and everything that it needs when it goes to install. And that's really time consuming because CD-ROM drives are kind of inefficient at that. CD-ROM drives can be relatively fast when it comes to copying files in a very linear fashion, like you can see, Going down the screen here, it's doing all of these folders in, and files in order. But if it needed to jump from one to another one further down the list and keep bouncing back and forth, the CD-ROM drive has to work harder. And so it takes a lot longer. 
by pre-copying all of these files into the hard drive, we can basically install Windows directly off of the hard drive kind of to itself. And because hard drives are a lot better at that random access, it's going to be a much quicker and smoother installation. Okay, and so that copy just finished. That didn't take very much time at all. And so now all I really have to do is run setup.exe, and this is going to kick off the Windows 98 installer. At this point, we don't even need the CD-ROM anymore. You can eject it and just continue on from here. And I'm not going to necessarily take you through the entire Windows install process. However, there is one step during this setup process that I do need to make an important note about. And that part is right here where it's asking you to select a directory. By default, because it already sees a Windows install folder on the C drive, it's not going to want to install in there. It thinks that maybe that's another version of Windows or maybe a corrupted version and you're trying to reinstall a fresh one. So it's going to avoid trying to install in there. That's why it's saying it wants to install in this cwindows.000 directory. We don't want to do that. That's kind of going to defeat the purpose of what we're doing here. So let's choose other directory, hit next. And then in this case, all you have to do is just delete that whole dot zero 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 part. Just point it straight at C windows. It's going to complain about it may overwrite your stuff or blow it up, but that's fine. Go ahead and hit yes. Now from here, it's a very straightforward Windows 98 install. There's nothing else special that you have to do. You're basically done. Just go ahead and finish the install, put in whatever drivers, additional software that you want. You are good to go. What's also nice about doing this trick is that it'll have all of those files from off the CD available on the hard drive going forward. What that can do for you is save you a little bit of annoyance because sometimes when you install additional software packages or drivers or additional features into Windows, it's going to prompt you for the original install CD because, like I said earlier, it only installs the files it thinks it needs at the time when you originally get Windows on the computer. So if you're asking for additional software, it's not going to have it on the drive, so it's going to want to hit you up for the CD-ROM. If you've already got all of the files from the CD-ROM on the hard drive, hey, they're available, and it'll either not prompt you at all, or even if it does prompt you, you can just point it straight at that C Windows Options Cabs directory. It's really slick and saves you that kind of futzing around for, oh, geez, where did I put my Windows disk that a lot of us remember having to do quite a bit back in the day. Anyway, this is just one of many tricks and, and shortcuts that people have developed over the years for these retro computers. If you know of any others, feel free to share them down in the comments below. And also, if you're getting into retro computing and there's stuff that you're curious about, some tutorials that you want to see, also hit me up down in the comments. And if there's enough interest in certain ones, I might do other videos just like this that cover those topics as well. For now though, if you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcom. And as always, thanks for watching.